If you want to be successful in any kind of business, you have to know your marketing numbers. In this video, I'm going to show you which numbers matter. Now, this is based on some of Alex Hormozzi's older stuff. Before he got famous and realized that uh, this is not the fancy, sexy stuff that gets people's attention on YouTube. So, if you can ignore the shiny objects and keep your ADD under control for just a few minutes and actually understand this, this will pay off big in any kind of business. And I'm going to try to keep this really, really simple so even you math phobes can understand. So let's start with the two most important numbers. The two most important numbers are these. LTV and CAC. C-A-C. What are these? LTV is lifetime value of a customer. CAC is cost to acquire a customer. So how much money do you make per customer and how much does it cost to get that customer, right? Whether in advertising costs or sales costs or whatever. So basically your job as a marketer or any successful business is just to do this. Make sure that your lifetime value of a customer is more than the amount of money that you have to pay in order to get that customer. That's it. Now, there's some people that say that these two numbers are the only numbers that matter, and that's not really true, because let's say that you don't have a profitable business, your lifetime value is not higher than your CAC, well, what's going on? Well, now you need to drill deeper into the more granular level numbers in order to figure that out. And so in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do that. And by the way, this is why data collection is so important for marketing, right? If you're making blind decisions rather than decisions based on data, then you're probably gonna blow up sooner or later, or more likely never get profitable at all. So let's start with lifetime value because that's the easier one, so we'll get it out of the way first. Cost to acquire a customer is probably what most of you are gonna wanna focus on more, uh, so we'll get into that afterwards. So lifetime value is what? Well, the way that Alex Hormozzi defines it, and I totally agree with this, is it is the uh, lifetime customer revenue minus the um, cost of delivery. What does that mean? That means how much money do you get in terms of sales from the customer minus how much does it cost to actually deliver that product to the customer? So if you sell a course or a coaching program or you're a digital agency, something like that, then chances are your cost of delivery are pretty close to zero, which is a nice way to be. And this is why I focus on those kind of businesses, but I realize not everybody does. So Let's say that you sell a pair of shoes for 100 bucks and you have to pay your supplier $30 and then you have to pay like $10 in shipping cost, right? Well, the, the um, amount that you're paying for the inventory plus the shipping costs are gonna be in cost of delivery, right? So your revenue, right, is gonna be 100 bucks for the shoes minus uh, 30 bucks for the, sh the shoes that you had to buy, the inventory you had to buy, minus another $10 for the shipping cost. Right, so your lifetime value, if you calculated just $100 because that's the sale amount, well, that's gonna mess up your calculation because you have to pay those expenses, right? So really, your, your value is $60 there. Now, this is assuming that uh, the person only bought once, right? If the person bought shoes every month, well, then your LTV would go up, right? You'd do that $60 times however many times they bought. Which brings us to the next point is this lifetime revenue. It's kind of difficult to calculate what is the lifetime revenue, but we can kind of approximate it depending on what the business is. And it's going to differ depending on what the business is. So let's say, for example, that you have a high ticket program that costs $10,000 and it's only charged once and then they get lifetime access or whatever. There's no upsell. It's just one offer. Right. Well, then any customer is the, the lifetime revenue of that customer is going to be ten thousand dollars. Right. There's no reason for them to buy anything else from you. So you can say it's just going to be ten thousand dollars. Right. Now, that's the simplest case. Now, let's say that you have a uh, value ladder. So maybe you have a seven dollar ebook. And then once they buy the ebook, then you try to sell them on a hundred dollar course. And then if they buy the course, then you try to sell them on a thousand dollar coaching package, something like that. Well, in that case, you want to figure out uh, the average order value, right? This will be average order value, which means for everybody that buys the cheap thing, like the ebook that costs seven bucks, how much do they buy on average of the upsells? Right, so maybe like 20% of them buy the first upsell and 10% of them buy the second upsell. Right, well then you would have seven dollars plus 10% times 100, whatever the second up, the first upsell was, times 
10% times 1,000, whatever the other upsell is, right? That would give you the average order value, which here would be a decent approximation for the lifetime revenue. Now, it's not perfect because it could be that they just buy the ebook at first, and then two months later, they come back and buy your coaching package, in which case you would have to revise this um, lifetime revenue up a little bit. But to start, this is a, a pretty good approximation. And by the way, it's good to always get this number uh, too low rather than too high, right? Because if you if you sell an ebook and assume that there's like a 50% chance that that person is going to join your high ticket coaching program, when in reality it's like a 5% chance, well, you're going to massively overestimate your long term value and you're going to probably put a lot more money into ads and promotion than you could actually handle profitably and you're going to end up losing money. So it's better to be conservative about estimating this number because if you're conservative, then you don't end up blowing up. Okay, so that's the LTV side. Now let's get into CAC, cost to acquire a customer. And um, the way that, that we calculate, the way that we go into the, the lower level numbers on this depends on the funnel. It depends on your sales process of how somebody goes from finding out about you at first to actually becoming your customer. So for this, I'm going to use an example of a webinar funnel, which is my personal favorite sales process. So the way that works generally is you have an ad. Someone clicks on your ad. They go to an opt in page, right? They sign up for the free webinar and then they go to the webinar and then some percentage of people that go on the webinar will actually buy your product, right? You pitch your product at the end of the webinar and some people buy. Now, there are two types of numbers that you want to calculate to figure out how well each part of this funnel is working. There are what I call percentage numbers or rate numbers, and then there's cost per numbers. So for example, um, on your opt-in page, you have of 100 people that, that look at your opt-in page, 20% of people actually sign up for your webinar. Well, that would be a 20% opt-in rate, right? That's a percent number. On the other hand, you have cost per numbers. So you wanna know what is your cost per webinar opt-in? Right, so you're paying 10 bucks or $20 per person who uh, joins your webinar, that's a cost per number. So we have this at every stage of the funnel, right? So let's start with the percent numbers. So of the people who see the ad, so, uh, some percent will opt in, right? That is an opt in rate. Of the people who uh, opt in, a, a certain percentage of them will actually show up for the webinar, which is the, the show rate, show percent. Of the people who show up for the webinar, a certain percentage of them will actually watch the webinar and stay until the end. That's a called a retention rate. And then of the people who watch till the end, a certain number or a certain percentage of people will actually buy the product, which is called a conversion rate, right? So these are the main numbers to know in terms of percentages and rates. Now, we also want to know the cost per numbers, right? So um, for the ad, generally, we want to know CPC is cost per click. Like how much do we have to pay on average per person who clicks on our ad? For opt-in, we want to know cost per lead, right? How much do we pay per person who is a lead? On the webinar, uh, we can have cost per show, right? So cost per person who actually showed up to the webinar. Then we can have cost per person who watched the pitch. So CPWP for cost per watch pitch. And then finally, cost per conversion is our... Um, cost to, well, this is to acquire a customer, right? So that's this number up here, cost to acquire a customer. That's how we finally get to it. Now, here's why this is so important. When our cost to acquire a customer is not as low as we would like it to be, we want to figure out why, right? Too many new entrepreneurs get this idea of, oh, I tried something and it didn't work. Therefore, I'm just going to throw it out. I'm going to throw out the baby with the bathwater and, and just scrap the whole thing. Well, we really need to ask the question, why didn't it work? How can we pinpoint the particular part of the funnel or parts of the funnel that didn't work? Because it may be that your funnel is 90% perfect and there's just one step along the funnel that's not working well. And if we can just tweak that and improve that, it'll fix the whole thing, right? That's why these numbers are so important. So I'll tell you the numbers that I look at mostly, the ones that are kind of the most important for me. Um, I like to see cost per click, opt-in rate, cost per lead, show rate, retention rate, conversion rate. 
those are kind of the, the biggest uh, indicators that I look for. That's kind of personal preference. Everybody's a little bit different, but these are, are the biggest ones in my opinion. But for a webinar funnel, these are really important. Now, you really want to know your benchmarks, right? You want to know, okay, for each of these numbers along the process, what is the number that's expected? Like, what is a good performance number? So if I'm paying $20 per lead and I've never had a webinar funnel before, chances are I'm going to have no idea. Like, is that good? Is that bad? Is it amazing? Is it horrible? I don't know, right? And this is why it's it's really important to get benchmarks. And, and this is, uh, it's really helpful to have a good mentor that understands the business model that you're doing because the, the mentor knows the benchmarks. It, he can see your, your $20 cost per lead and say, okay, that's kind of high. I don't like that. I'd like to see it below $10, right? But you, if you don't have any experience, you don't know that yet, right? Or if you have a retention rate on your webinar of 50%, he can look at that and say, I'd like to see that at least 70%. Right. He, he knows what's to be expected already because these numbers are kind of useless if you don't know what it is that you're you're looking for. Right. Because if a, you have a funnel that doesn't work, if you know the benchmarks, you can look at these steps and figure out which one is subpar. And once you know that, then you can tweak it, you can improve it, you can try something else and you can get it working. And knowing the benchmarks is also really important because it helps you know if you're on track. Like if you're just starting a new funnel and you don't have any data, you haven't actually run a webinar yet, you don't have any data on the show rate or the retention rate or the conversion rate, you can know if you're on track with what you are doing. Like let's say that you're already getting leads uh, and you're getting leads for $10 a lead right now. So you got your... $10 cost per lead. And if you know the benchmarks, you can extrapolate out to see how much is going to be your cost to acquire a customer, right? So let's say um, you know that a normal show rate is, is around 25%. So you'd say divided by 0.25, 25%, right? Which gives you uh, $40 cost per person who actually shows up on the webinar. And maybe you know that a good retention rate is about 75%. So you'd say divided by 0.75. Um, and then you get that that is, well, like $50 or so cost per person who actually watches to the end. Let's say that you know that a good conversion rate would be 10%, right? So you'd say divided by 0.1, uh, and then you'd have, right, $500 for your cost to acquire a customer, right? So if your uh, product is $1,000 or $2,000, well, now you're spending $500 to make a $2,000 sale. Right. So assuming that you're, you meet all of these other benchmarks at a cost per lead of $10, you can be fairly confident that you're doing a good job. Like up to this part in the process, you are doing a good job, but you couldn't know that if you don't know the benchmarks, right? Because look at, look at how different these numbers are, right? So, um, uh, this is a 0 0.1 versus a 0 0.75. So 0 0.75 is a lot higher than 0 0.1. Uh, but if you're expecting like 75% close rate, then th that's near impossible. There's al almost no chance you're ever going to do that, uh, right? Whereas if you're getting like a 0.3% retention rate and you think that that's good because you don't have a frame of reference, well, then you're missing out on a lot of potential because you could have it up to 0.75. Right. So you really, really want to be able to calculate these numbers for yourself. And you really, really want to know what the benchmarks are so you can compare and you can figure out what are the bottlenecks? Where are the biggest opportunities for improvement? Where are the places where my funnel is falling down that I can tweak something and improve it? So what do you do when you find that something isn't working? You find that one of these numbers is not meeting the benchmark. Well, then you want to drill down even further into even more granular numbers. Again, why numbers are so important. If you're numbers phobic, you're going to have to get over it because this is how the game is played. You just have to dive into it and, and study it until you understand it. Go rewind this video and watch it again if you have to. So anyway, let's say that uh, our, our cost per lead is $20. Right. And we want it to be $10 or less. Right. We $20 is pretty bad. What do we do? Well, there's a, a whole bunch of different reasons that our cost per lead could be high. It could be that we're paying too much for ads. It could be that we're not uh, converting opt ins. It could be that our headline is bad. It could be that our opt in page is too long. Like there's a million reasons and diving into the numbers will help us figure out what reason it is. So let's say uh, the problem is our cost per lead is too high. We're going to dig in and figure out 
why that is. Well, there's two numbers right here that could help you. It could be either cost per click is too high, or it could be that the opt-in rate is too low, right? So that's the first thing to look at. So let's say that your opt-in rate is 25%. An opt-in rate of 25% is pretty good. So that can't be the problem. And then if your opt-in rate is 25%, CPL is, is 20, then that means your cost per click has to be $5, right? Well, $5 is a pretty high cost per click. Uh, so let's figure out why that is. Now we can actually dive in even further, even further than just cost per click. So there's, there's multiple steps on the way to getting a click. So if you think about how the online ad platforms work, and I'll use YouTube ads as an example because that's what I use the most often. Uh, well, you have, first of all, your targeting, like who is actually seeing the YouTube ad? It could be that you're showing your ad to an audience that's either not big enough to get enough views and so it's it's expensive, or it could be highly competitive, that everyone in the world is trying to target this particular segment of people and so that's why it's expensive. Well, how do you know that? The first thing that I want to look at is uh, cost per impression. That means how many people are actually getting fed my YouTube ad video, whether they choose to watch it or not, how many people are actually getting it in their feed, right? And how much am I, am I getting charged for that, right? And so I wanna see, does my cost per impression make sense or does it seem excessively high? If it is excessively high, then chances are the issue is my targeting. If the cost per impression is not excessively high, the next thing I wanna look at is view rate. Okay, so of the people who are uh, seeing my ad, how many of them are actually watching it versus just skipping after the first five seconds, right? If 99.9% .9 of people are just skipping my ad after the first five seconds, it means that my hook is not working, right? The beginning of my ad is not grabbing people's attention, so that's what I need to work on. If my cost per view or my view rate is actually pretty good, well then probably the issue is that people are not clicking. So they're watching the ad, but maybe the call to action is weak and people are not clicking. And so by looking at these numbers, I can pinpoint exactly what part of the ad it is that needs to be improved, that isn't working, right? You can see how helpful this is because if you're just looking at the whole thing and saying, oh, LTV is not uh, higher than CAC, the whole thing's broken. Well, it could be it's just the hook in your ad is the only thing that's not working and everything else works beautifully. Right? Do you really want to throw out the whole thing because there's one tiny little piece that's not working? If you understand the numbers, you can pinpoint exactly what it is that needs to be improved. If you do this, I promise whatever kind of business you have and that, you know, the funnel is going to look a little bit different. If you have a, a high ticket phone sales funnel or you just have like a front end funnel with a sales page that says here, buy my stuff, it's going to be a little bit different, but you're still going to be able to map out exactly the process and the numbers at every part of the process. And you're going to have these cost per numbers and you're going to have these percent or these rate numbers, whatever kind of funnel you're using. And if you understand, if you can look at your numbers, have that visibility and have the benchmarks to compare against, this is going to be really, really, really powerful in your business. And for all you Alex Hormozzi fanboys that just clicked on this video because it has his name in it, check out this video where I walk you through how I created a full offer using his $100 million offers framework from his book.